Hello everyone! Today I have something different for you than my usual content, but hopefully not less interesting. Namely, I will show you how to achieve this really simple grass, and also I will show you how to make it react to object passing through. So in this case you can see that it's cutting down the grass, as well as we will try to give it some fake wind so that it looks a little bit more interesting in the animation. This effect works both in Cycles and Eevee, but obviously if you want to have the best results then I strongly recommend Cycles. And now without further ado, let's jump right into the fresh blender scene. Now first of all let's delete everything and click Shift A, add a mesh, in my case it's gonna be a cube, just for the demonstration purposes, but feel free to use any geometry that you want the grass to be spawned on. Now go to the edit mode. And with all the vertices selected, click right mouse button and choose subdivide. Now with shift R, let's repeat this action a few times, so we have a nice, quite dense but not too much grid of points. Because our effect is using vertex weight, we need some geometry to work with, but also don't go too crazy to not kill your performance. I will leave it at that and then I will jump into the modifier and add some subdivision to have a nice round corners, but this is not mandatory, I just feel like this geometry looks much nicer for presentation purposes. But but feel free to do whatever you want. Now the second thing is the object that is gonna cut the grass, so shift A, in my case it's gonna be UV sphere, but again feel free to use whatever you want. Let's move it a little bit up so that it's on the surface, scale it down a little bit and move it aside for now. Now first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a vertex group established for our grass particles, so go into the edit mode and make sure that all the vertices are selected, then go to the vertex tab, click this plus button to add a new group, rename it to something like grass, and with all the vertices selected, click assign to assign them to this group. Now out of the edit mode, we can also add another group and let's call it exclusion, because this will be the vertices that we will subtract from the grass group to separate the areas where the grass will grow and the areas where it will be cut down. Now let's select the cube and go into the physics tab and choose dynamic paint. Now with the type canvas, click add canvas and change the surface type from paint to weight. Now we can open the output tab and this vertex group is gonna be the exclusion. Now with the canvas set up, let's move to the object that's gonna cut the grass. Also choose dynamic paint but change the type from canvas to brush and click add brush. In the paint and change the mesh volume to mesh volume plus proximity, which is gonna let us control the distance from the object to the vertices that it's gonna affect. And now with this done, let's set up a simple animation to see whether it works. Click I on the keyboard and choose location to add a keyframe on the first frame of the location. And then I will choose 60 because I don't want to kill my computer, but you can make it however long animation you want. I to add a location as well. And my animation length is gonna be 60 as well. So now with this brush moving across the the surface of our canvas, we can select the cube and go into the weight paint and as you can see our cube is all red, which means that all the vertices are of weight of 1, which means all of them are affected and that is probably because we need to go to the vertex group tab and as you can see we are now previewing the grass vertex group, which is not being our canvas, so just switch to exclusion and you can see now that our brush is affecting our canvas just like we want. The one thing that you may want to adjust is the fall off, so this gradient between 1 and zero values of the vertices. So let's go to the object mode, select our brush and go into the physics tab. Now to change the fall off, simply go here and change it to color ramp, which is gonna give you this color ramp and let's make it quite tight so that now when we go to our weight paint, you can see that area affected is quite close to our mesh, which is exactly what we want. Now with this done, let's go to the object mode and with the cube still selected in the modifier tab, let's add another modifier. This time it is vertex weight mix, which is gonna give us this two input fields of the vertex group. So vertex A is gonna be our grass, where we want the grass to appear, and vertex B is gonna be the exclusion. And now the vertex set we will choose to V group A because we want only to affect the first group and we want to affect it in a way that we subtract the second group from the first one. And with this setup done, we can finally move to the particle tab, click plus button to add a particle system and change it to hair. Now let's make it a little bit smaller so it at least resembles grass and go to children 
choose interpolated to have a little bit more of them in here. We can also bump up the number of the particles to like 2000 maybe. And now go down to the vertex group and in the density choose the grass vertex group. Now as you click play you should see that even though the brush is obviously passing through the canvas the particles are not really being updated. But if you change any value here so let's say change the number then the particles are being updated. And in order to make them updated in real time as the animation progresses we have to enable regrow which is gonna regrow the particles on every single frame. So as you can see we have this very simple setup done but now there is one more problem that we might have that you may not expect later and that is if you try to render this as it is now then you may not really see this gap in between the particles and let me show you what I mean by that. Let's add a camera and then hold down Control alt and click 0 to frame it to our view. Check this camera to view to position it nicely. Let's also go to the rendered preview, add some light, maybe sun is good enough and now as you can see if I try to render this you can see that even though the ball obviously passed and in the viewport we can clearly see there is no particles here they are still appearing in the render view but there is an easy fix for that so first of all you will need to save your scene somewhere so click save blender file and we did that so that we can actually bake some data so let's click on our cube again and go to the physics tab again make sure that you're on the first frame of the animation and open the cache tab and then here all also make sure that all the frames that you want to have in your animations are included in the bake. In my case it's just 60 but just make sure that it matches whatever your animation is because it is not automatically updated as you change the animation length and with all that set up click bake. This may take some time depending on your computer and the complexity of your scene but as soon as it's finished we can now click play. As you can see the effect still works in the viewport but now additionally when we click render you can see the particles are being removed in the render view as well. So that's just something to keep in mind that if for some reason the removal of the particles doesn't work for you in the rendered view, just make sure that you bake this data and if it doesn't work you can delete the bakes and bake it again because sometimes it's a little bit moody in a way it works. So with all this technical stuff out of the way, we can start making our grass look more like a grass and not like weird hairbrush or something. So first of all we will create a material for it. Let's drag a new window, change it to shader editor and with the cube selected click new to add a new material. We can leave the principled BSDF as it is and add an image texture. Now I have pre-downloaded this grass texture from textures.com so feel free to grab it there for free as well or grab any grass texture that you want to use. I chose this one because it has a nice variations but feel free to use whatever you want. In this image texture node click open and open the texture. Now let's also add a texture coordinates and a mapping node. Connect the texture coordinates UV to the vector and the mapping output goes into the image texture and let's also add a value node that we will connect to the scale so that we can easily control the scale of our texture. Now this whole setup goes into the principled BSDF base color and we should see something going on already. Let's increase the scale a little bit maybe something like this and you can also play with the values of the principled BSDF. I usually like to keep the roughness quite high to like 0.7 and the specular quite low because I'm not going for like ultra realism and I like this fluffy look to my grass but feel free to adjust it to your needs. I mean there is tons of great tutorials about PBR texturing so to each their own as they say I guess. Now with the base color setup let's also work on the shape of the particles. Let's go to the particle tab and first let's enable advanced which is gonna give us this physics tab that we need to tweak some values in. Now this little trick I actually learned from Pixo 3D so shout out to you if you ever happen to watch this video. Uh, thanks for the advice. Uh, in order to make them a little bit more rough and kind of random, we have to increase this brownian value. But also don't go too crazy on it because values like 0.1 already give sort of this wonky result that uh, in my opinion is a bit too much. So I would recommend something like 0.070 and then we can also bump up the number of the particles to see how it looks like when there's a lot of them. And the next thing that makes it even more messy because right now you can see that we have those clumps of different grass groups and if we render it you can obviously see that there is these groups all over the place. So we can also go to the children interpolated roughness and then feel free to experiment with those values however you want. But I usually like to drag the run them quite a bit something like 0.3 maybe and also endpoint just a little bit and I think that this already looks really great. If you click render then with all the children spawned as well I think this gives off really really nice result for such a simple setup. But 
again there is a lot of values and they all give different results so i really encourage you to just dive deep and go crazy with it because the possibilities are basically limitless also one more mention as you can see right now when we play the animation we are removing the particles completely from the mesh and that is because the vertex group is affecting the density of the particles but if you want to just trim the grass and not cut it out completely then you can also choose length instead of the density but then because of the brush is affecting our vertices so harshly effectively it's gonna cut the particles by one so it will give off the same result as if you had it plucked density so if you want to just shave a little bit but not completely we have to select our brush and go to the physics tab and here you have the alpha and wetness just change those values to something like 0.6 let's say and now again because we messed with the dynamic paint things we have to go back to the cube delete all bakes and then bake again and now as the animation goes if we go to the rendered view you can see that the particles did not get completely removed but just trimmed down to like about half the size of the original ones so depending on the result that you're going for i'm just letting you know that it's there and actually i completely forgot about the wind part of the video so i'm really sorry but i have to record this from the future so as you can see i already have set up the scene where the ball is just moving around the cube and the grass later regrows back which is achieved with this dissolve checkbox in the dynamic paint can canvas of the grass and then the time is basically the amount of time that it will take for the particle to fully grow back to its original shape and then if you check slow then it's actually counterintuitive but then the bigger the number the faster the particle will grow back to its original form anyway let's move now to the wind part of the tutorial so this is gonna be actually really fast because all we need to do is we need to add an empty object it can be plain axis or whatever you want let's move it up here so we can see it and then go to the physics tab and choose a force field then change the type of the force field from force to turbulence and as you can see it already distorts our hair or in this case the grass then the strength you can control directly in this force field so i recommend something like 0.2 something not too crazy and then the size is basically the size of the noise that is affecting our grass so the smaller it is you can see the more frequent the turbulence happens and then the bigger you go the more softer and overall less frequent the noise is and now in order to make it move with the animation we have to simply animate this empty that is controlling this force field so let's go to the first frame and with the force field selected click i to get its location on the first keyframe and then move to the last one and move it let's say somewhere here and then click i to add the location to the last keyframe and now as you click play you can see that our grass is moving sort of like on the wind if you're not satisfied with the look of it then you can always just adjust it in this force field tab so let's choose maybe smaller size like two which looks i think slightly better so yeah really sorry for this a little bit awkward input from the future but i just completely forgot about it when i was doing the the main part of the tutorial so now let's go back to the original course of action and as far as the setup goes uh, i think this is it everything else that i did on my scenes that you've seen in the intro was basically just adjust the animations add some little particles shooting up from the object and add few lights to make it look nice and atmospheric but i don't think i will include it in this tutorial because then it would have to be much much longer and i'm not sure all of you wants to watch that but maybe i'll just show you a quick setup that i like to do that i actually learned from a polyfjord another youtube channel really great youtube channel recommend everyone 10 out of 10 would watch so first of all let's change the rendering engine from ev to cycles and the device to gpu and let's remove the sun because what i learned from polyfjord is that you can get much better result by just creating a plane and adding a emission material with the desired color and also bump up the strength and that basically works like a big lump but additionally you can like control the shape and the size of the lump so it's just much more comfortable to use than a regular light source at least in my opinion so let's just position it somewhere like here let's add another one maybe move it here a bit smaller and also let's duplicate the material so we can change the color to something more greenish and also make it not as strong go a bit lower let's make sure that we are framing it nicely
maybe like so. Let's also add some plane on the bottom with a default material. Let's also bring the roughness more so it diffuses the light a bit better. Bring it down so it works just as a nice background. Maybe this light is a little bit too strong. Move this aside and let's also add another lamp sort of from this side quite weak and also maybe a bit orangey and just like that we have a very pretty and honestly quite satisfying result with such a simple setup this could pass for something like moss even so as you can see the hair particle settings are basically everything there make sure to tweak it until you get the desired result because i assure you it is there in those values so that would conclude everything for this tutorial uh, again i know it's not my usual stuff but i just wanted to get out of my comfort zone and do something else uh, let me know whether you liked it or not or would you prefer more of content like this or are you here just for the stylized anime style stuff then also let me know uh, additionally i would love to see what you create out of this make sure to tag me uh, either on reddit on twitter link for both are gonna be in the description and yeah hope you enjoyed and maybe even learned something and i will see you in the next one bye bye